What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in once again. So not too long ago, I uploaded a video on how to increase your DT score to a 110 or higher on your ASVAB test. And since that video, I've been getting a bunch of questions asking, how long does it take to become an officer from enlisted? All right, so I had this E4 specialist in the comment section asking me how long it takes. He said he's about to become, uh, he said he's about to finish basic training. He said he has his bachelor's already and I'm gonna assume he has a GT score of a 110. So that's what this video is about. And honestly, I hate to give this answer, but it's the honest answer. It all depends. And it all depends because it's a process. And that's what this video is about. I'm gonna talk to you guys about the process and I'm gonna give you tips on how to decrease your timeline in order to get there faster. So stay tuned. So I wanna make sure I'm giving you guys A1 advice, okay? So first and foremost, there are actually two ways to become an officer in the Army. You can go green or gold, or you can go OCS, Officer Candidate School. I went through OCS. I'm not too familiar with green and gold, so I'm not gonna, so I'm not gonna talk about that today. But honestly, you guys, it's the same process in order to get elected. What this process is, right, you have to submit a packet. On your packet, it is a bunch of admin work on you, the soldier, stating why you are qualified to become an officer in the Army. Just because you get selected to Officer Candidate School does not mean that you are an officer now. It just means that you are able to go to the school and compete to now become an officer. And once you complete that school, then you'll be an officer. I'm not gonna get into the weeds about OCS. I'll say that for another video. We'll see. So like I said, there's a, you have to submit a packet with all your admin work. And this is why I need you guys to go to, go to the HRC website and you're gonna need your cat card I want you to go on a search engine, type in OCS, and look for the meal prep message on OCS, all right, on how to get selected. The meal prep message is a to-do list. It has timelines that you need to meet and need to buy by, and it has everything that has to go into the packet in order to be submitted to HRC, all right? So this packet is going through a bunch of echelons, all right, and this is where it get a little intricate. By no means, I mean no kind of disrespect, all right? Imagine you are on a team and a bunch of people, you got a shitload of people that wanna join your team. Are you gonna just let them join your team right out the gate without no kind of background and just because they have a bare minimum, which in this case is a bachelor's and a GG score of a 110? Are you gonna just let them join, it, join your team? No, you're not. And this is why you have to make yourself known in your organization. That's essentially what it is. So for me personally, it took me two years and honestly, it would have took me about a year had I not deployed. I'm not gonna tell you guys everything that's in the packet, but just the important things, all right? So you need letter recommendations. Who do you think these letter recommendations are coming from? It's coming from people in the army. And no, your letter of recommendations should not be a coach from college, a professor or something like that. It needs to be people in the army that can speak for you and speak for your work ethic. So what have you done? If your name was to come across the battalion commander or the brigade commander's desk, they're gonna be like, who? Like, who is this guy? What has he done for organization? Oh, because he has a GT score, he has a bachelor's, he's, he's, he's okay to be an officer? No, it don't work like that. You have to make yourself known. So additionally in your packet, besides those letter recommendations, you also have to do um, an interview. You have to go on a board. And on that board, they are asking a bunch of questions. Usually it's gonna be questions like, you know, like situational questions. And they wanna they want to, they want to see how tactful you are. They wanna see, you know, if you're, a, what type of leader you are, or how you think and everything like that. So listen, you only have two chances per year in order to submit your packet to HRC to be selected. So this is why I need you guys to do the due diligence and check the meal per message, check the last meal per message and see what all they ask for because honestly you guys it's all the same nothing has changed okay you in that in that packet you have to do like a bunch of physicals you know you have to do this interview you have to gather all your transcripts and everything everything yourself that deems you qualified to be an officer and this is why i need you guys to take a look at it now i'm gonna give you guys tips okay so like i said you have to make yourself known because your company, your company size battery commander signs off on it, your battalion commander signs off on it, and then it goes to your brigade commander, all right? But honestly speaking, once your battalion commander says, okay, yeah, this guy's, this person's good to go, your brigade commander gonna, gonna sign off on it because nine times out of 10, he's probably never seen you 
before, you know, not everybody's situation is like mine because my brigade commander actually knew who the hell I was because I was doing shit for the organization. You know, my name is ringing bells and this is what I need you guys to do. I need you guys to make sure your, your presence is felt in your organization and making sure that you're adding to the team, all right? Anyway, you're not gonna just walk through the door fresh out of basic training and saying, oh, I wanna be an officer, all right? They're gonna look at you and be like, who are you? Are you even, like, what What makes you think that you're a good officer? You gonna, yeah, you'll be a good officer. You're not even a good soldier, we don't even know you. Now I'm gonna talk to you guys about my process and this is gonna help you tremendously because these is good, good tips, you guys, all right? So. When I first came in, I was just like you. I was like, yo, I want to be an officer. I don't want to do this enlisted stuff. Like, you know, I'm trying to make the money. Like, like, I'm trying to get some responsibility. I'm older than all these soldiers anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just like that. And honestly, you guys, it's a privilege to be an officer. So this is my process, okay? And it would have took shorter had I not deployed. So as soon as I came in the Army, I, um, um, I got stationed in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, home of aerosol so if you're if you're going to a unit like fort bragg or fort campbell i'm telling you right now those fort bragg is home to aerosol you want the first thing you want to do is become aerosol qualified uh, air, uh airborne qualified or aerosol qualified okay that's only if you're going to those schools whatever that base has that they're really gun hole about and who about you need to go ahead and get yourself qualified in those things because that's going to help you a lot better because it's like shit, are you even helping out numbers I deployed within two months of me being in the army, you know, came back from my deployment, went to the promotion board, got, um, um, was promotable. I got promoted to Sergeant E5. So listen, before I was even promoted to Sergeant E5, I was still a specialist. When I was a specialist, um, I got sent to be an orderly room NCO at an HHB, um, at an HHC, I mean. So, which means I was in charge, right? I was an OIC and I was only an E4 promotable, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, what that pretty much means is I had direct, I had direct um, communication with my, with my battery commander. When I came back from deployment, I got sent down to HAC to be an orderly room NCO. So I was still only an E4 specialist, you know, um, fresh, just came fresh off a of deployment and I was an NCO of my shop at this point. You know, I had about four soldiers underneath me and this is as an E4, okay? So what that did was gave me direct communication with my, com with my commander and my first sergeant, okay? So these are the people that's essentially signing off on my paperwork. I made sure that whatever my commander asked for, I did that shit expeditiously, all right? And with doing that, I, you know, I showed my maturity, you know, and um, he knew that I was going for my master's at the time too. So what that did for me, what it could do for you is show, you know, that actually you're mature and, and officers are, don't, I mean, no jokes, officers are usually mature. So I need you guys to go to the board. Go to the promotion boards. Go to the Soldier of the Month boards and compete for Soldier of the Month. Because guess who's gonna see you on a Soldier of the Month boards? Guess who's gonna know that you're winning the Soldier of the Month boards? Not just your supervisor and your platoon leader, but also your commander, all right? They gonna know who you are. The Sergeant Major is gonna know who you are. And I'm pretty sure he's gonna go back and you know, if your name comes up with the commander, He's gonna talk to he's gonna talk to the commander about you, and know what happens when you want soldier in the month board? They take a picture of you, and they hang you up a nice little frame where everybody can see, everybody know your face, soldier in the month. You know, especially as Boros, I think that's your name, right? Especially Boros, whatever. Go to soldier in the month boards because you need to you need FaceTime. The first sergeant of my company. He wanted um, volunteers for aerosol PT instructors, all right? So you had to be aerosol qualified. Aerosol PT instructor, like I said, I was at Fort Campbell, home of aerosol, and numbers are important to these commanders, all right? They want their entire formation to be aerosol qualified in Fort Campbell. You know, because pretty much if you ain't aerosol, you ain't shit in Fort Campbell. And they're gonna look at you like, oh, you're not even supporting a team. 
So, you know, the first sergeant asked, hey, I need volunteers. I need, I need, I need some, I need a, I need somebody that's aerosol qualified, or whatever, high speed, blah, 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 to be an instructor. I'll volunteer for that job. I mean, I didn't know I was doing this. I didn't know this all stuff was happening, but this is why I need you guys to understand, right? Because at this point now, I didn't even realize that I was helping how many organizations I was helping, like how many echelons I was helping. I was helping the company, I was helping the battalion, and I was helping the brigade because essentially these are numbers that get added to that company commander, battalion commander, and brigade commander's books, you know what I'm saying? Because their numbers are increasing aerosol, right? You guys, I kid you not, I remember this shit like it was yesterday. And I'm not saying that the brigade commander specifically came down to my office to talk to me about aerosol, but maybe he was in the AO. But this guy, I didn't even know he, I didn't even know he knew who the fuck I was. He came to my office and he was like, how many numbers you got for aerosol? Going to aerosol school. And I was like, oh, I mean, he was just like, yeah, you know, he wanted them numbers, all right? He said, Sergeant Aiken, I was a sergeant at the time. He said, Sergeant Aiken, how many numbers we got? I didn't know he knew who I was. Cause he's so many echelons above me. This man is busy as hell. He knew my name, right? So you guys, what are y'all doing for the organization? So the last thing I'm gonna talk about is uh, I was also the AER rep, that, that AER loan or the AER loan, whatever it's called, you know, is the person that come around um, every like November time frame, December time frame, asking you guys to like sign up for, um, you know, to give a portion of your of your of your pay to um, support soldiers that's in need, right? So I actually got volunteered to do this, but you know, I just, I, I had to execute. So I did this and I didn't realize how much this actually helped me because doing that job, you know, I was able to, to make myself even more known. I, I had more face time with now my battalion commander. So my brigade commander knew who I was. So now my battalion commander, she know who I was, you know what I'm saying? Cause I was the AER rep. And, with, and when you're the AER rep, so that's, that's a tip for you guys. You guys, volunteer to be your battalion's AER rep, or AER rep, whatever the loan is called, all right? Volunteer for it. And when you volunteer for it, I want you guys to, you know, this is what I had did. So I went around asking people for money to be like, hey, can you give a portion of your salary? You feel me? You know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, campaign and stuff like that. Every formation, every battalion formation, I'm asking people, you know, so in those formations, my face is being shown to everybody, right? So now, not only am I promotable, not only did I become promotable and I get, you know, and I got promoted to sergeant and I'm the aerosol PT instructor and I'm the only room NCO, I see or whatever, I'm also a rep for AAR. So what I did was, there's another thing too, you guys, your commanders care about those numbers. They want to raise the most money possible, all right, because it looks good on them. So that's what I'm saying, what are you doing for your organization? What are you doing for your company? What are you doing for your battalion? What are you doing for your brigade? So I raised as much money as I possibly can. What I did was, you know, they like to see updates on their programs. This is, this is essentially every program you're doing is your commander's program. So I made a little chart, I made a little board, a nice little board. I drew some shit out and I, and I had like a goal and I had like where we are now. And in that meeting, it took about five minutes, but like, hey ma'am, sir, my battalion commander was a ma'am. I was like, you know, this is where this is where we are. This is where our battalion is. This is where I would like to be. You know, I think that we'll be here. And it's like, and it's like, you know, I'm owning it. And in that meeting, they they remembering your, your face. Okay, listen, they see so many soldiers per day, but they're not gonna forget a face and forget a name. And they're definitely not gonna forget who's doing shit for their fucking organization. So they remember who the hell I was. I went to the battalion commander office on this and I went to the brigade commander office on this. So, hey, this is where, you know, this is where we are. And then I ended it with, would you like to donate? And then they remember me, you know, then when I passed them, you know, they say, oh, Sergeant Aiken. They remember now they, you know, they call me by, by my name. It was, it was like cake for me to be accepted because everybody knew who I was. I went through BLC and I got, and I, and I, I was the only person in my group that made the commandants list. That was a big thing too. 
you know? So it's another thing, you guys, I'm showing, I'm performing. That's what, that's what I need you guys to do. I need you guys to perform. I need you guys to help your organization, all right? Because they don't, they don't care about your bachelor's and your GT score. HRC does. So that's how you guys wanna get endorsed, all right? That's a process. So listen, if this video helped, let me know in the comment section. If you got any more questions, you know, you know what to do. You know how to reach me. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. I'm going to see you guys next time.